So I'm ready to uh, start doing some of the grinding and here's the um, Milwaukee tool with the little grinding cylinder on it. Um, one of the things I have to do, I've, I've kind of put an, uh, a fish eye on here just to get the idea across. So that mark is the center of the fish eye and obviously I've got to grind down this edge quite a bit so I can drill this socket. So that's, that's going to be one of the first things I do. I'm going to show you a little bit of the grinding and then I'll show you some intermediate steps. And like the cutting disc, uh, you have to pick the proper speed otherwise it will try and melt. So uh, sometimes there's a little bit of um, um, going up a bit or down a bit. But uh, I, th I think I've pretty much got it now. So I'm going to start the grinding here. I'll show you a little bit. And then I'll show you some various stages along the way. Here we go. So I'm not sure how much you can see right now. You can see all, all the, the dust coming off. So that's, uh, it's certainly sanding, not melting. But uh, there's actually quite a bit of material left to go. Now I have cut off uh, a part of this bill originally, but uh, there's just a lot of material to go in. And it just takes time and you, you have to uh, do what you can. Well, I've done a fair bit of grinding on here, but uh, I've got to go at least half of the width of the eye uh, towards the nose to be able to get that eye in there. So the nose is 15 millimeters, so I've still got to go seven and a half millimeters this way as a minimum. So uh, you can see here, I'm going to leave this one side here as a as a guide, but uh, you can see I'm I'm moving a lot of material. And towards the end here, I'm going to have to kind of grind it in and make it all look nice. Okay, you can uh, see I've taken off quite a bit of material right here. If I, uh, if I put an eye on, I'm not quite flat yet. You can see the side there with the eye sticking out a little bit, so I've got to go a little bit more towards the nose yet. And then I'm going to start to blend this eye in. But uh, you can see the, uh, the bottom side here, it's starting to blend really quite nice. So you can, can now see that that eye is sitting flat. So here's where we've come from, from one side to the next. Lots of plastic to remove and we're going to have to uh, figure out how to blend this hole into this, uh, this lip. So I may put uh, a piece of uh, tape on it and see if I can draw it in and then we'll have to copy it and, trans uh, and, and put it on the other side. And bear in mind all of this. So I put a piece of tape on here and I, I just roughed in a curve that made, might make it look nice. So here's how I make my template. I just take a piece of cardboard, uh, put it tight to the nose, and I scribe the curve. Go as far as you want, doesn't matter. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this curve out, flip it over for the other side. Okay, you can uh, see the contour that I've made. This is all material that has to be removed. So that's quite a bit of material. But that will make a nice um, uh, look. They'll both be the same. Okay, you can see that we're getting quite a bit of it uh, taken away. And of course we're also sculpting this, the side at the same time. 
Lots of grinding, lots of a surprising amount of uh, dust from the plastic. Surprising amount. So this uh, this other side now is ready. I've put the eye there, kind of temporarily, just to see if it'll fit. And it uh, it's pretty good. I got to take a little tiny bit more, but it's pretty darn good. So this uh, this bill has all been sculpted, and uh, it's always a problem where the um, plastic interfaces with the wood. You always got bumps and stuff, but you know what? We're going to fill that up with a, a really nice uh, uh, filler, and then we're going to sand this, and this, this, this will all look very, very nice when it's done. So I've drilled the socket, and you can see the eyes fit in there beautifully. See the socket there on both sides. So we're ready to do the uh, next part on this lure. Uh, that is filling up this this uh, channel that I dug in there. Now, in order to do that, of course, you want to make sure it doesn't leak out. So I have already filled the belly hook hole with uh, five minute epoxy. So it's not going to leak out. So I'm going to be dribbling in the uh, longer setting epoxy in here and it's going to be dribbling down inside. Sometimes what happens with the lead is after it cools it it pulls apart a little bit from the wood and um, on occasion the uh, epoxy will actually drip out here. So what I what I do is I put a couple of pieces of paper down to catch any drippage and I get my standard Kleenex box and I pull this uh, tape back. I don't want to put epoxy on top of that tape. That won't do anybody any good. Okay, so we're gonna <coughs> lean the lure on the Kleenex box, but instead of leaning it on the main part of the bill, we're gonna lean it on the, on the two parts, and that'll give us a bit of a slant so as I put this uh, epoxy in, it's going to dribble down. So off camera, I mixed up a batch of epoxy. Now one nice thing that this epoxy does as well, is that hole that we dug, that great big drill. If we can get a little bit of epoxy on, on those uh, marks, those scratches from the, from the bit, uh, again, they will just simply disappear. So, at first you can put in a, a great amount. I don't have any quick way of putting it in. I dribble it in little bit by little bit with my little stainless steel scrap here. And you can also pick it up and Give it a bit of a more more of an angle. That helps sometimes, but as the uh, epoxy starts to set, sometimes the epoxy will drain from the front part of the uh, channel and kind of overflow. So that doesn't always get you what you want. I can tell already that the epoxy is starting to, to thicken. Just when you've got it, you think you've got it uh, full, you take off and then you come back 15 minutes later and it's down a whole bunch and you got to add more. But there's a point where the epoxy gets so thick that you can't add it anymore. So it's been about eight hours since I, uh, I put some epoxy in that uh, trench that I cut in the plastic. All hard, almost visible, invisible. Those pesky bubbles uh, can maybe show it off a little bit. But now what I need to do is I need to put some epoxy down the tail. I'm going to use my vise just to hold it. I 
put a bit of green tape on the tail of the lure. Uh, when it glued, uh, the, the water had actually warped the sides a little bit. So I'm going to try and keep any uh, epoxy in there that I can. And uh, maybe it'll leak somewhere else, maybe it won't. So I'm going to, I've just got it propped up against this uh, little vise here. And I'm just going to be dribbling it in. And I guess we'll see if uh, you have any more leaks. This is not really exciting stuff. I'm just going to do a little bit on camera. I'll come back tomorrow when it's totally hardened. It tends to drop a little bit overnight. I may have to add a little bit of five minute epoxy on the end here. Guess we'll find out. So we're back again and uh, we've uh, finished off uh, the tail. And there's probably, my guess would be, there's probably a two part epoxy right down into here. I had to come back many, many times and put in a few drops, put in a few drops, and that went over about a, a two hour uh, stretch while the um, epoxy started to stiffen. So I'm, I'm quite confident that this tail loop is solidly glued in. So what I've done is I've started to uh, fill any of the holes, and I have two kinds of filler. Um, this one is called the Pages Plastic Wood, and uh, this Le Pages uh, Plastic Wood is um, solvent based, and uh, when it dries, it dries very quickly, it dries relatively hard at first, and then after several days, it's, it's absolutely rock hard. So I use this uh, plastic wood for covering up holes, like the, uh, the hole that we poured the lead in. And um, the problem with this uh, filler is that it is somewhat uh, uh, rough. Uh, and what I mean by that is when you sand it, there are holes in it. So to, to, to fill up these holes as a second coat, I use um, this Elmer's wood filler. Now this is water-based but there are many um, small holes that have to be filled and at the end of the day uh, this lure is going to have three coats of two-part epoxy on it so uh, anything that you filled with this will be covered at least three times so I, I see no issue and this stuff is very very smooth and buttery and you can put it right on top of that uh, uh, plastic wood and it fills in all the little gaps. Also, it's good for little cracks, little bumps. For example, here is one area towards the tail where there were some marks from the, from the lead that I had strapped to it. So we'll fill those in, very, very small. And you can see that I filled in everywhere that I thought there was uh, a hole, mainly, of course, around the uh, the bill where it goes in. There's always uh, some holes there. And uh, one thing I did is uh, you can see how rough the um, the bill is. Now this is from uh, grinding it on uh, the disc sander. So what I did is. While I was uh, working on this front uh, area and putting in glue down the uh, stainless steel, I uh, put a little bit of glue on the, uh, the bill itself just so I can show you how clear it turns. So eventually this whole bill will be covered with the two-bar epoxy and it'll, it will all be that clear. So it's, it's, uh, it really does a, a wonderful job the uh, first sanding and when you're 
grinding this part of the bill so the, the plastic material is much harder than the wood. So as you're using a, so it's inevitable when you're sanding, you're using a, uh, a cylindrical sanding drum, if you will, albeit a small one, and you're kind of come down, trying to grind down the plastic, which is much harder than the the wood. So what's what happens is you tend to come off the plastic and take a bit of a divot out of the wood. You try to minimize that, but you can't stop it. So the first time you put filler on, you uh, try and find the high, spot, high points. And after the first grinding, I found some high points and I, I ground them off again. So I put another layer of filler. And what's very useful about this time is to use a putty knife. And the putty knife being fairly long, will tend to average things out. So it'll fill up holes and it'll actually even uh, identify high spots. And it may take two or three coatings of uh, putty to get this absolutely perfect. But the object at the end of the day is to have this bill transition perfectly smooth into the wood. So when you look at the lure, you can't tell that the plastic is back here. Now, the plastic is back here for strength. That's the only reason it's there. Now, I've also countersunk the screws. I decided that two screws were enough. So I, I used a slightly bigger drill and uh, drilled in a little tiny bit. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but I, on that patch that I put a bit of uh, epoxy on, you can actually see the screw going all the way down. Also notice that here, away from these darn bubbles, that drill hole that we made is gone. It's, it's in absolutely invisible. Now it's, it's filled with epoxy, and the epoxy has filled the scratches. And if it wasn't for these darn bubbles, boy, this would be a, a fantastic looking bill. It's still okay now, it's still plenty strong. Uh, I'm sure the fish won't mind, but it's just a craft kind of thing. You wanna make things as good as you can. I've also put a second coat along the edge and filled up a few holes. Uh, you may remember that there was a bit of a, an area towards the tail that hadn't been filled. So when I was putting in epoxy into the tail, I put tape around here and that filled that void perfectly. A little tiny bit at the end here that I had to, to, have to cover up. But it, it, so I'm, I'm very satisfied that there's probably uh, Epoxy maybe down into this area here along that uh, little ridge that we, we cut out, that little slot. So I'm, I'm very satisfied that this will be a very, very strong one. I, I don't know from experience that it will withstand a wahoo because wahoo are crazy fish and they do all kinds. And when you, these wahoo aren't small either. I mean, very easy to get a 45 pound wahoo. And uh, on some of my videos, I show a picture of my fishing buddy in Spokane, and, and he's standing beside a 95 pound wahoo, which is an absolute beast of a fish. So, anyway, I'm gonna let this dry, and uh, I might have to do some more filling you know, once, twice, three times. So, I finished the, the sanding. I must admit, around the uh, the eye here where the plastic was, it took me three separate coats. And uh, if there's any advice I can give you is, is use your eyes, but also use your fingers because sometimes they can feel things that your eyes just can't see. So everything has been sanded to about 220 right now, 220 grit. And all the split has been carefully uh, filled and sanded as well. Now, you notice that I've got this front bill all taped up. So I'm getting ready for the first coat of white oil-based paint. This is a trim clad. And it's, it's kind of hilarious what happens on the first coat. You think you've done your best work, you've sanded everything, you've, you've used the best light that you've got, and then you put the first coat of paint on. And you find out 
Oh my goodness. And what, what, the, uh, what the first coat of paint does is it, uh, it highlights everything. So if you've missed a little bump, it shows it. If you've got some scratches, it shows it. And although it's a little bit embarrassing that first coat, you, you kind of got to get through it and you fix things and you fix things. And then you give it a second coat. Now the second coat is always much, much better. So there's always a little bit of fixing to do. Just, but my dad, when I was growing up, always said that paint was not a filler. And he was probably right. However, the, the little fine scratches that I have in these lures lend themselves very well to the paint filling in. And after three coats, about 80% of these little fine scratches go away. So, in some regards, paint can be a filler. The uh, first coat of paint has dried. It's showing a few little things. There's a few little holes that I've got to fill. Something up here in the tip here. I'm not quite sure what happened there, but you know these are these are the things you're going to find. I have a scratch right here. I may try and feel. But the, the biggest issue, of course, is the first coat does not cover the grain. So um, second coat will get very close to covering the grain. I have some interesting issues coming up with the final look of this lure. And on my next video, part eight, I'll be talking about the options. One of the things I'm thinking about is using something called Krylon Looking Glass. And um, I'll show some of my standard lures, all my standard colors. And then um, I've been working on a, um, a sample lure and of course what it, what it is is mostly chrome and depending on how good this Krylon is and depending on whether I can cover it uh, and, and protect it with the two-part epoxy, I think I'm going wild and crazy. I may, I may just do this lure with uh, chrome and uh, and I don't know exactly what the, uh, the covering will be, the color. I'm thinking kind of a, a darker gold along the back, but making it a very simple lure. Um, anyway, it's fun to think about. I've seen uh, people on the internet using uh, a variety of products to get chrome. Uh, the chrome is not quite as good as this uh, on my sample, but uh, you know what? That's what I'm thinking.